Hello, thanks for joining us on what has been a truly devastating day. Melbourne is in mourning tonight. Indeed, the whole country is stunned after the tragic events that have unfolded on the city's streets. Three people were killed, among them a 10-year-old child, at least 20 injured when a car crashed into pedestrians. Now, there is terrifying video that shows the driver acting erratically, performing donuts and shouting at bystanders. When police arrived, he sped off dangerously down a crowded street mall. What could have caused this? Well, it appears to have started as a family violence incident in the early hours of the morning. It ended with police shooting the man and dragging him from the vehicle. Eyewitnesses called in to local radio immediately after the incident, including former Victorian Police Commissioner Christine Nixon, who was at the scene. Me and my friend, we were just on, um, on Swanson Street and we were emerging from a laneway. And then when we were on the tram tracks, we like turned around and we saw this car like just like complete, like crazy. Like it was at like 80 kilometers an hour, just crashing through people. Like they were propelled into the air. We turned around in the middle of the tram tracks, like we stopped dead and we saw people like completely struck by the car. And to think that like three seconds, earlier that would have been us if we hadn't run across the road the people they looked like dead corpses but afterwards we saw people were performing cpr on them um so i'm not sure if they were pronounced dead but they were struck really hard we heard sirens and then we stopped and then we saw the car just hit and this lady she had like shopping and she was just like in the air and then she was down so quickly. Delusional, he was like a maniac on the footpath where pedestrians, innocent pedestrians were just walking up and he struck them dead, like, he just struck them. This kind of just reveals how precious life is and how thin, like, the string that it holds onto is and it can be taken away any second, basically. I was on the corner of um, Burke and Williams, waiting to cross the road, across the road, and then people were calling out. I turned around and saw the car. Uh, he was probably about a metre from me, and I kind of stepped back, and he went by, and then continued on down Burke Street on the footpath, being chased by police officers who were probably about two or three seconds on the road, and then uh, I kind of stood there in some shock and surprise to then hear shots straight after he driven past me and down um, down Burke Street. That the police following, I think, were then desperate to try and stop him in the front of the RACB club, and down there, a number of people on the ground, many bystanders ran to help those people, and I went to help the woman who owned the pram, and she kept asking me, "Where's the baby?" and I don't know, he and his mother were hit. And I think what's happened is he's then been thrown, he, she, I'm not sure, has been thrown out of the pram. The pram's then been dragged along with the car. And there were people who were dealing with what I could see eventually was, mm. I think, a young child. Yeah, as you could imagine, it's been a very tough day for police and all first responders. Just moments ago, I spoke to the Chief Commissioner of Victoria Police, Graham Ashton. Commissioner Ashton, thank you so much for giving us your time today, and particularly at such a horrendous time, and condolences to you and everyone in Melbourne who's been affected by this tragedy. Can you bring us up to date on just where the investigation is right now? Uh, thanks, Stan. Yeah, an absolute tragedy uh, in Melbourne here this afternoon in the CBD, about quarter to two. And this afternoon we've had a vehicle, 26-year-old man, uh, plough through uh, pedestrians, lunchtime shoppers, in the middle of the Melbourne CBD. Uh, an absolute tragic situation developed at that time. Uh, we're uh, certainly still confirming that at this stage uh, if there were many people who were impacted by the vehicle, but at this stage we have three people confirmed deceased. Uh, we've got five people who are in a critical condition at hospital under treatment at the moment, and certainly we fear uh, that that death toll mm. could increase. But at this stage, uh, yes, that we've got plenty of people injured. Commissioner, what can you tell us about the driver? Are you learning more about his background? Oh, certainly, Stan. He's well known to us. Uh, he has a long uh, family violence history uh, that we're aware of. 
uh, of recent days we've become concerned about uh, in relation to drug use and impacted by drug use and even uh, we're aware of a mental health uh, background with I, this individual as well. I'm sorry Commissioner, D does that mean you've been monitoring him in recent times? Uh, it came to our attention uh, a few days ago for offending and uh, so we were dealing with him and in fact uh, that offending had continued and that we were attempting to arrest him today in fact and we were uh, had, had made a number of attempts to try and, uh, and arrest him through the course of today. Now, at the moment, what is his, what is his situation? He, at the moment, he's suffering a gunshot wound. Uh, to stop him, police have rammed his car and through the course of that exchange, uh, he's been shot by police. Uh, he's got a wound in his arm. Uh, he's at hospital at the moment getting treatment for that, obviously under police guard. Uh, but at the moment, uh, his condition is stable, uh, being treated for that wound. What is the legal process now for him, potential charges and so on? Yes, yeah, Dan, he's uh, going to be charged uh, in relation to these multiple homicides. Uh, there are other matters around which we'll be charging him as well, but centrally they'll be around those uh, homicides and uh, also the, the, those that are critically injured. Uh, a lot of very, very serious offences there that he'll be charged with uh, and we'll be seeking, obviously, when he's presented to court, uh, for him to be remanded in custody. Now, when he gets to court, he's going to depend on his injuries and the treatment of those injuries. So we, we need to get the health issues sorted first and then we'll get him presented and charged and remanded in custody. Commissioner, of course, your, your officers were there on the scene. They have seen this. How are they dealing with what's unfolded and, and the public in general that you've had contact with today? Yeah, look, an incredible uh, scene uh, up there in the city, uh, Stan. We've had uh, many police on duty in the city. The Australian Open tennis is on here at the moment, so we've got a lot of additional police on duty in the city. Uh, many police were on the scene really quickly as a result of that. Uh, primarily those tasked with arresting the offender, arrested the offender, but we had many police involved in administering first aid to the injured. Uh, we had off-duty paramedics, people quickly coming to our assistance, and also, importantly, members of the public, and this was incredible, that mm. we've had a lot, of, a lot of members of the public just stepping up straight away. Officers have told me of a sense almost of calm mm. of members of the public quickly coming to the aid of the injured, and no doubt uh, we need to pay testimony to their efforts tonight because... Uh, but for their efforts, this death toll Indeed. could have been a lot higher. Indeed. Commissioner, as I say, a, a horrendous day and um, the work you're, you're doing there as well to give us your time is much appreciated. Thank you. Pleasure, Stan.